Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and iOS 16.3 has been out for a couple weeks and iOS 16.4 and iOS 16.3.1 should be coming very soon. I wanted to first talk about features that are actually coming to iOS 16 that we already know. Also some other things in the news as well as the overall experience with iOS 16.3 so far. I asked again the other day on the YouTube community poll if it seems to be different than the first week of the overall experience. So we'll take a closer look at that in a little bit. But as far as new features that are releasing to iOS 16 in the near future, well, one of them we know for sure is very soon, according to Tim Cook. This is Apple Pay Later, where you'd go into your Apple wallet and then you can pay later on your Apple card, sort of set it up as a payment plan overall. Also the Apple card savings account. So you would be able not only to pay later, but also have a savings account to save some money, put it aside if you needed anything there. Now, additionally, we're also waiting for web push notifications. We've had this on Mac and other devices for quite some time, and we'll get web notifications coming soon to iOS. We know this, this is on the iOS 16 webpage, and it's something we just haven't seen yet. Also, the updated CarPlay is there as well. So if we go to their webpage, and this is where we would get notifications from, maybe the Apple webpage when there's a new product, but we'll also get an updated CarPlay experience. You'll see it says the next generation of CarPlay brings a fully integrated, immersive iPhone experience to your vehicle. Apple's partnered with a lot of different people to make this happen, and we should start seeing this in new cars soon, and also hopefully an updated experience on iOS as well. So we're still waiting for that. Within the code of iOS 16.3, we know for sure that there's actually code referencing Apple Music Classical. So that's something we could see aside from just a different category altogether that we have in the Apple Music app. So we'll have a separate one where you'd go down to your categories and under your categories, not only would you have your genres, but you'd have a whole separate app for the classical music experience. This is something that's been mentioned for quite some time. It's in the code. They just need to activate it at this point. Also, iMessage contact verification. That's something that would verify the contact, let you know that it's someone that says who they are is actually who they are. So that's something that would show up in messages very soon and also new emoji. The new emoji will be released this year and Apple doesn't come up with these emoji, but rather the Unicode consortium does. And you can see some examples here. So there's some new ones coming out such as jellyfish. You'll see we have some wings here and more. So those are things that all different device manufacturers and operating system manufacturers typically will update. So Android, iOS, Windows, Mac, those should be coming very soon. Which version of iOS, we don't really know, but usually around springtime. And then additionally, we're waiting for Apple Home Architecture. This is something that they've updated and then they took away. So with the new home pods and all the different devices that have been released, we should see that very, very soon. As far as a few other things I wanted to mention, I did have an unboxing of the new home pod second generation. I have one right here. So be sure to check that video out. I have a comparison with the first generation as well. So Apple released that and that's available to everyone, although it could roll out around the world at different times. Also this week, we saw the Samsung S23 Ultra. Many people have been asking me when I'll have videos about that. As soon as I get my hands on one, I'll have some videos about that, unboxings, comparisons, and more. One thing that's a little bit sad to me is Apple is apparently dropping its product design chief. This past week, we found out that not only did they leave, but they're no longer replacing anyone, meaning Johnny Ive, where he was in charge before, then he was replaced or he left and someone took his place. Now no one's actually replacing anyone. And they're just reporting to the COO or chief operating officer, Jeff Williams. Apple has always been all about design first, and they're sort of uncompromising in their design. So hopefully this isn't changing anything going forward, but it's just something I wanted to mention. Now, almost two weeks ago now, we had the release of iOS 16.3. That along with Mac OS 13.2, Watch OS, and all the other OSs that go along with everything else. One thing I wanted to mention is Mac OS 13.2 apparently breaks compatibility with Pioneer CD and DVD drives. Pioneer actually acknowledged the issue and said they're investigating it on their website. So I just wanted to make you aware if you're using that for any sort of production or anything else, hold off on updating until that's actually fixed. Now it's been a bit of an odd release schedule lately with Apple. What I mean by that is we had iOS 16.3 and we have no beta since then. 
last year and many years before that, just like last year, we had 15.3 release. The next day, Apple released iOS 15.4 beta one. Then we have those betas this time around. It's been more than a week and we haven't had a beta. We also haven't had any other releases. That's very unusual for Apple. So I do suspect we'll have something soon and Mac rumors in nine to five Mac are actually saying that within their databases, they're seeing people using iOS 17, iOS 16.4, and also now iOS 16.3.1. Typically when that happens, what that means is in the database of Safari, they actually have an update where they see what operating system people are running. And for whatever reason, people are using those versions at Apple viewing Mac rumors and nine to five Mac. This happens every time where the next week there's typically some sort of update. So we could see any one of those very, very soon. I would expect next Monday or Tuesday, if we're going to have a public release Monday, we could have a public release of 16.3.1 to fix bugs the next day or so Tuesday or Wednesday, we could have 16.4 beta one. Apple is doing something we haven't seen in a very long time. So if they don't release any updates this coming week, well, they seem to have to have changed something and maybe we won't have anything, but it does make me think about iOS 17 a little bit more, meaning maybe Apple is planning either some different features or holding off until iOS 17 is shown to the public in June at WWDC 23. So I would expect we have some sort of update there, maybe a revamp of a design to go along with reality OS with the Apple AR VR headset, or maybe they have something completely different going on, but either way, we haven't seen an update and it's very unusual. So we should see that very, very soon. Now the overall experience of iOS 16.3 continues to vary depending on who you ask. If you're someone that uses your phone casually, most people say it's absolutely fine. And we'll take a look at the YouTube community poll and some of your comments a little bit later, but the overall experience has improved for some over the past couple of weeks and it's degraded for others. For me, it's been mixed depending on what we're talking about. So the AirPods case bug seems to be fixed for me. So if I open up my AirPods pro two case here, you'll see it connects and that's fine. It's showing the, the battery status and everything else that doesn't seem to be an issue for me anymore. However, sometimes they just won't connect properly. For example, with my Mac earlier today, I was editing the video about the home pod and it wouldn't connect properly. I actually had to use different headphones. So I'm not sure what that was about, but that could be the AirPods. It could be a combination of some odd Bluetooth bugs, but I have had some weird Bluetooth bugs on the iPhone as well. Recently I was using it for music on my car and it just wouldn't work properly. It actually uses the phone as a phone key. And when you approach the vehicle, it unlocks. However, that worked fine, but the audio did not. Audio worked fine with other phones, just not this. So there's something weird there with iOS 16.3. The YouTube rotation bug does seem to be working okay. So if we go into one of my videos here and I drop the volume down, we'll rotate, you'll see it's nice and smooth. So that seems to be fixed, although that's more of a YouTube bug and they fixed it with software, it seems with an update. Also, some people are still having issues with the screen staying off. So when you go to wake it up, I'm hearing more and more that it's just not waking up properly. Sometimes you'll have to click the button multiple times. I've seen this once where it just wouldn't wake up properly. I'm not sure what that was, but it's definitely something that was there. Also squared notifications seem to be happening more and more. So if I go into notifications, sometimes these are completely square and then they immediately snap back to, to rounded corners. So there's some odd bugs there for sure. Also signal strength or cellular connectivity has been kind of poor for some people. It's been okay for me. It's working. Okay. I haven't had any issues. In fact, I've had more issues on Wi-Fi as far as calling through Wi-Fi, but that's more of a carrier issue than the phone itself. Also that camera bug persists, but Apple hasn't said they fixed it yet. Meaning that sometimes when you take a photo, it will be darker than what it actually is on the screen. This is a known bug at this point. We're waiting for them to fix it. Additionally, the music swipe home bug is still there when it goes into the dynamic Island. Oftentimes it's slow and stuttery and many people just see that over time that has stayed here for me. And then I reboot the phone, it goes away and then comes back a few days later. This seems to be a continued issue that I'm having on this phone. I'm not sure what that is. And then other people are saying that shortcuts can be laggy and slow. I haven't seen that, but I don't use this every day. So if you're having an issue with shortcuts, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. Now, when it comes to overall battery life, well, you'll see I'm down to 42%. I haven't plugged it in today. So let's take a look. We'll go down to battery. 
Battery health and charging, I'm down to 99%. I've shared that before, and here's my battery health based off of coconut battery. You can see the cycle count as well of what I'm actually using it. So it's still okay, it's at 99%, that's normal. And if we take a look at today, I've used it three hours and 52 minutes of screen active time, seven hours and five minutes of screen idle time. And a lot of that was my home and lock screen. I've continually turned off notifications to try and get that to go away, but it still seems to be using a lot of power. The day before, not so great. About 60% of my battery was used with just two hours and 37 minutes of screen active time. However, some people are saying that there's some issues with privacy and security, with tracking maybe causing issues. You'll see that the arrow is constantly there at the top showing my location is being used under location services. You can see that by scrolling down and anyone that's actually purple means it was used recently. And you'll see here, it gives us a little description and compass calibration and other things. I've tried messing around with this a little bit and haven't really noticed too much of a difference, but maybe you've gone into significant locations and tried turning off settings. Let me know if that's helped you in the comments below. I don't like to turn that off as I actually like to use a lot of those features, but let me know in the comments if it's helped it for you. Battery life for others continues to be good depending on who you ask. Last week, 62% said battery is good, 27% said battery is bad, and 11% say it's the same as iOS 16.2. Based off overall statistics, it seems to be about the same. A little over half are saying it's better, but not everyone. So it really depends on who it is and how you're using your phone. Now, as far as performance, well, other than the stutter that I've mentioned before with the swipe home bug, that seems to persist and hasn't been fixed yet for most people. Most things are nice and fast and smooth. Scrolling is fast, ProMotion is smooth, and older devices seem to experience good performance as well, depending on what apps you're running. Of course, some apps are going to be different than others, depending on what you're using, but in general, you'll see this is a nice and smooth experience. If we go to listen now, we'll wait for Wi-Fi to load here, give it just a moment and scrolling is still nice and smooth even as it's loading. So in general, it seems to be pretty good. Now I did run benchmarks again, just to see what we got. And you'll see, I scored 1,875 for single core, 5,054 for multi-core. If we go to the history, it's actually a little bit lower based on February 3rd versus January 18th. So you'll see 1875 versus 1866 and 5,054 versus 5,368. Now this could be because I was using the phone a bit, maybe something's going on in the background, but in general, like I said, most of the time it's fast a reboot fixes most of the issues. As far as overall heat seems to be staying fairly cool. I can feel it being a little bit warm. That's not really a concern, but again, I'll show you the thermal camera in case you're interested. If we bring in the thermal camera here at the hottest point, I've looked around here, I've hit about 31 degrees Celsius. 30.7, 30.8, just depends where you're pointing the camera. As far as Fahrenheit, that's about 87.6 is what I'm seeing. So 87.5 or 87.6 degrees Fahrenheit. So in general, it's nice and cool. Now, as far as the iPad, we haven't talked too much about that, but I did want to mention it. I've been running iPad OS 16.3 full time. And let's take a look at the battery. You can see the battery cycles here in coconut battery. And it was last charged yesterday, late at night. So we've used it about three hours and three minutes plus 24 minutes, and we're down to 21% battery. It really varies depending on what we're doing, but sometimes I get great battery and then other times I don't. It's very strange, but the experience overall is nice and smooth with ProMotion. Everything seems to work okay, but for whatever reason, it seems to be poor on battery again. And even wiping the device doesn't seem to fix the problem, so it's a continued issue. In the YouTube community poll, I actually asked the other day if iOS 16.3 is getting better or worse than when it was initially installed. After 12,000 votes or so, 40% of you said it's definitely getting better than when iOS 16.3 released, 16% say it's worse than when iOS 16.3 released, 30% say it's fine with no bugs, and 14% haven't updated yet. Now there's 294 comments, let's take a look at a few of them. Pablo says, on an 8 Plus and the iPhone doesn't get anywhere near as hot, on iOS 16.2 it would get very hot, and battery life is much better. Something was running in the background a lot on the last version to, to make it get that hot, but I have no idea what. 
Piotr Bayer, hopefully I'm saying that properly. I'm using iPhones almost 10 years now. Never saw such a decline in software quality. UI bugs, camera software doing over-processed photos, photos not being saved in gallery twice on my iPhone 14. I don't believe I'm typing that, but iOS needs Android 13 quality. Flagship Android phones, of course. I'm surrounded by iPhone people, and this is a common thing right now. And I would have to agree. I actually talked about this on my Telegram server and Discord, linked in the description. And this is something that I'm seeing. Android is actually more stable in many ways on the Pixel, which is something I never thought I'd say. Subasish Ghosh says, it's definitely getting weirder, getting the bugs again, like keyboard vanishing, overlay issues in photos and lock screen, notifications when a song is playing in the background, battery life, although is a little bit better than iOS 16.2, but not like 16.1 or 15.7 standards. Momin says, it's the same. Apple should fix its iOS software properly now. In my opinion, iOS 16 from the start was very poor. However, Apple managed it, but still a lot of improvements are needed. I'm saying it because of the price customers pay for iPhones should match the quality. In my opinion, iOS 15 was way better for new and old iPhones. Damon Hambridge says running iOS 16.3 on a 13 pro max, the weird stuttering bug I had with 16.2 is gone and battery life is even better after the first few days. It wasn't bad on 16.2, but I could easily get 11 to 12 hours of screen on time goes all day and normally 70 to 75% battery left. Unless there's a security patch needed, I'll, I'll likely stay on this version for a while. Thanks for the videos. And so that's everything with iOS 16.3. After a couple weeks, it's very unusual for us not to have an update by now. So hopefully we get an update this week and Apple was just working on it more to make it more and more stable. That's what I'm hoping for. I'm sure many of you are thinking the same. Let me know your experience in the comments below. And if you'd like to get your hands on this wallpaper, of course it will be linked in the description as it always is. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.